Hey, y'all, and welcome back to another fan mini episode of Catch That, where we get to know our friends and our people through their favorite R&B songs. I am Natalie Elise, and that's my brother. Yeah, y'all. And we are the R&B representatives. And today, we are welcoming back dope, dope, dope brother by the name of Easy Money, Facil Dinero, out here. <laughs> Please, please. <laughs> Appreciate you guys having me again. I am an R and B rep, unofficial member. For those that don't know, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm back outside. <laughs> you know, thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys always, man. Hope everybody's well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know? So we're we gonna jump right into it. What song did you pick to talk about today? And if you remember the first time hearing it, tell us about it. Um. So the song that I chose is, so last time I was here, Michael Jackson, Rock With You was my song. That's one of my top five songs. of. I don't know my top five songs of all time, but there's three that are certain. One of them is Michael Jackson, Rock With You. Mm -hmm. One of them is Biggie Small's One More Chance Remix. And the other one is this one, New Edition, Can You Stand the Rain? Ooh. I don't remember what I ate for breakfast, so I definitely don't remember <laughs> the first time I heard the song because that shit is mad long ago. But it's like it's just one of them songs that every time you hear it, it's like the first time. It's that timeless. It's that yeah. perfect. It's mm -hmm. that fire. You know what I mean? So let's talk about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Well, how about you? I mean, why do you? Love it, or give us a, a favorite part, and then we'll go okay, from there. So, when, when you don't want me to start talking, because it'll be the least show. Okay. It's all good, right? So, um, first of all, your shirt is amazing. I see the record. Ah! We got, we have to establish that. Um, me, me, in my mind, right? My mind is not your mind. It's not his mind. It's not anybody else's mind. But in my mind, when I hear, when I think of an elite ballad. I think of this record, right? All the elements in it, you know, the production, um, just how it starts, how it kicks in. It gets you warm and fuzzy. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you if you mm -hmm. disagree, feel free to share. But that you know what I'm saying? Um, again, the songwriting, the production, the arrangement. Um, the you know how, how the arrangement, you know, the yeah, the arrangement, people. Of, yes, okay, go ahead. That shit, man. No, of course, <laughs> really, that shit matters. Everything about it, and and you know, um, big shout to you know Jr's boys, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, because you know they 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 hit a grand oh, slam with this shit, man. Like there's they, no other way to what? put it. No, oh, other he's talking way about our friends. friends. He's talking about friends. Oh yeah, oh friends. he's talking about our friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> they hit. They they knocked this shit like so far out the park. You know when they when they when they smack it over the green monster and that shit land on Lansdowne. Yes. At Fenway. That's mm -hmm. exactly what they did. Yep. And um, again, I just feel like it's it's perfect. I can never play it only once. I can never play it only twice, three times, and better. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And um, yeah, man, it just takes me there every time. You know what I'm saying? And if you know, if if uh, you know any any ladies that might be watching, you know, don't get too close when that shit come on, cause I get excited. <laughs> <laughs> and so, do you know who I think is low key the star of this song? Hmm. Oh, hold up. But low key, so it can't be Ralph because he's hacky. He's yeah, lead. um, hold right. on. Johnny motherfucking Gill. Oh, if you... oh absolutely. I, I felt like that was the obvious answer though. So I, that's yeah, why I was me thinking. too. That's why I didn't go there. I'm like, yeah. well, y'all, was... y'all music heads though, so of course that's the obvious answer. <laughs> true, okay. true, but, true. But yeah, because without him on those backgrounds, the way that he was. Those was the most in front backgrounds I've ever heard, and it worked. Yes. Uh, sometimes you, when I listen to the song, I only sing his back backgrounds. I just be like, ooh, like I'll just be doing Johnny's uh, mm. background ad libs and stuff. Can we do that sometimes? Well, you, do that for me privately one day. <laughs> <laughs> on, 
I want to hear what you sound. I want to hear. He a fool. You know. <laughs> you know. You, you know. Put on Jimmy, the spot, Jimmy, you know. I, I, I know. Uh, Jimmy was blessed. like in an interview. He said that it was the how they wanted to introduce Johnny, you know, to the group and to the world. And he was like, "That's why if it is a love, you don't really hear Johnny. Then you're not you're not my kind of girl." He brings them slowly in with them ad libs, and then he said, "Can you stand the rain?" He was like, "We just let Johnny go, cause by now you know him, and by now you should have a damn album by now. So you should know what Johnny sound like. So third single, we gonna let him open, because again, the group is about Ralph's voice. It's him. So yeah. then now." You learn who Johnny is. We gonna let Johnny start off the record, and Johnny starts that shit off like it. It gave them the maturity that they needed. You know what I'm saying? Because Ralph couldn't play that off. Come on, no. Because they was trying. To... <laughs> right. It was like <laughs> it was like he couldn't be. You know, Ralph. Ralph has that that voice that it's like it's still kiddish, but it's still. Cool, but they trying to be men right now. They coming out of that cool it now era and all that shit. And it's like now we need men. And he brought that credibility to it. You know almost what I'm saying? Like, so, almost, almost like like Ralph was like Eddie Kendricks and, and, and Johnny was like David. That um, period. You know what I'm saying? Period. Even I though feel I you. love me some Eddie better than David. Come but, on. And, <laughs> but that's besides the point. That's besides that the, the point. point. You know what I mean, though. It's just Eddie I, had the softer it's perfect. voice. It's perfect. You know what I mean? It's perfect. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Mm -hmm. I mean, and but also it. Ralph is your guy, so it. You know the analogy. That's there. true. That, very. In very. fact, the analogy was spot on. Actually, yeah, it, spot doesn't, on. It, doesn't mean, <laughs> it doesn't mean one is greater than. It just means for this one right here, Johnny, you gonna knock this shit out. Yeah. I need Johnny. I need John. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like when MJ found Steve Kerr for that one shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On on the corner, not the corner, but in, on the on the on the corner. Yeah, the corner. You know, yeah. and Johnny Joe knocked the shot down. That's it, man. Mm -hmm. Teamwork make the dream work. Period. You feel and me? Then to know that Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis was inspired by the stylistics, you make me feel brand new to create this because they was like, you you want to move up closer? That that was cute, at least, because uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know they they how that song starts off. Russell does not start at all, cause Russell is the voice of the stylists. He don't start at all. What's his name started? What's his name? Um, Aaron. He he starts it all. Aaron Love starts it all with the deep register, yeah. and then mm. freaking Russell comes in with that falsetto that's crazy, and that's what Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis is like. We gonna do it like that. That's we true. gonna have Johnny start this. And we're gonna have Ralph come in and do what he needs to do. And then we're gonna get Ricky the bridge. <laughs> no pressure. Mm -hmm. I really one thing, one thing about the song too, um, is I really appreciate um it's almost like oxymoron, like like simply profound. Like the shit is like nothing, they're not saying anything crazy, but them shit is bars. No, you know what right. I agree. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, that. storms will come. It's obviously, you know, you know, using the metaphors and all that on, on, on some MC shit, kind of. Storms yeah. will come. This we know for sure. Can you stand the rain? And, you know, like, how they use the rain as a metaphor for, you know, love and relationships and all that and, and the hard times and all that. Just mm -hmm. simply profound. And it's like, I feel like can you stand the rain has become just a, a way of... Uh, it's just like a, a a model, like a mantra that everybody live by. Like mm. nobody's exempt. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, yo, I, I stood agree. The rain. You know, I've been through my shit. I stood the rain. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. So that shit is really, really, really bars. Cause you know, I'm I'm, I'm I'll be on my MC shit. I really listen for shit like that. You know, when it's yeah, of like, course. <laughs> not always the, you know, uh, like they say, the lyrical miracle. It ain't always the complex shit. Sometimes it's the simple shit that is extremely profound. And when you have that, when you have that, like as a songwriter, mm -hmm. I mean, we talking about we talking about two of the greatest that ever did it, Jam and Lewis, so, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Like, I, if if I didn't have a life, I would I could probably dig up the tweet. But when verses started, like wait, like you know, 
I always thought they were the matchup for Babyface, not Teddy. I think me and yo, I think me and you went back and was like, yo, they should have been. Yeah, that's who I wanted it to be. Sense. That would have been. I didn't want it to be Teddy at you all. I didn't. I didn't. No, and I mean, and you know, I mean, Teddy's Teddy. Let's not get it fucked right, up. Right, right. We're not right? taking that because away. You know, we're in a sensitive. We're in a sensitive era. Oh, you guys, right. Teddy sucks. Oh, where? Nah, mm. Teddy's Teddy. Mm -hmm. But you know, what I'm saying, I felt like they should have been the matchup. And you know, you know, shout out. Shout out to my man, Sean. You know, uh, a couple years back, I dropped my little R&B EP. And, you know, like, like they so iconic that me and Sean, when we was writing the songs for the EP, I was like, yo, we Slimmy Jam and Scary Lewis. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that was that was like our name. You know what I mean? Like, me and him was like, you know what I mean? I was like, yo, Slim, <laughs> Scary Lewis, back to it. You know? And, and they're, so, they're, they're so, like, iconic mm -hmm. that my mind immediately went there. And mm -hmm. I dubbed us that rather than anything else. Did big shout to them, man. They 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 just, you know, we're not gonna get, you know, started with the with the Janet talk, because I know JR will will have us here all night. But um, you know, the Ooh, world, the world, that the was a shot. No, not oh, a shot. that was a shot. No, not a that shot. No, a it's, shot. It's, it's, no, you know no, why? It's a compliment because, because you have, they have that every much episode. Talk about. She nah. does that an episode. It's not it's a compliment. It's a compliment to them because they have so much for you to talk about. They have so much. Go ahead, Elise. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so the reason you said it was a style too. is because I because I pick on Jr. I say he always find a way, and you can roll the beautiful bean footage. He always find a way to bring Janet into something that is so like over here, mm -hmm. not that. I got you. It, I mean, sometimes. It, Sometimes it do be applicable, but, but sometimes it be a little, little reach. It, but in, 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 in <laughs> Wait defense, a minute. You know what's so defense, crazy? You know him. what's so crazy? Since y'all brought that up, because I said the first time I heard Can You Stay in the Rain, right? I was like, wait a minute. This, this sounds like Making Love in the Rain with, you know what I'm saying, her, Albert, and Lisa Keith, and Janet on background. I was like, it gives you funny how time flies a little bit. It yeah. definitely gives you Alex O'Neill sunshine and if you were here tonight. So I was like, say here for the I was like, yo, this is the sound of Jam and Lewis with a slow jam. Mm. I was like, yo, it can't be denied. Cause when I heard it, I was like, and I was like, yo, that sound like making love in the rain. Then I was like, it wait, it sound like Alex O'Neill. I was like, if you need a slow jam from Jam and Lewis, D, this is what it is to me. Yes. I'm like, if I'm thinking about a slow jam from Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, I'm going to say, "Can you stand the rain?" Or yeah. the break and first. I, one thing, I, one thing is that it's the um the tempo as well, right? Mm -hmm. Slow, slow jam tempo, but it's not so slow. Where mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? It's still got. Yeah, the like my yo, I, there's no there's no words to put. It's just like my two step is vicious when the shit comes on. Like the <laughs> tempo is that perfect. My two step is elite. <laughs> Jimmy Jam and Taylor Lewis they sneaky. They it's a slow jam, but they gonna they gonna like sneak some like kind of hard drums in there yeah. every now and then. Yeah. And you can, so everything still kind of has a bop to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They're not regular R&B drums. They just can, a little can, can, bit... you that, can you do that little shoulder thing again, mommy, please? One more time. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to do it ten more times. Yeah, I... she is. She is. Don't you yeah. worry. Yeah. You, you, you did you did that though. I saw it. I saw it the first time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be content. You know what I mean? When what? they did this on did y'all see the performance when they did it on Cine or Hall? And freaking, know, let me know. tell you something. Johnny ate for life. You hear me? Mm. Like the ending was nuts. It was like, yo, I was like, Johnny was like, I'm gonna show my ass. You hear me? Like, I'm gonna show right. my ass. Because <laughs> obviously, the first two singles, they dancing, and that ain't Johnny bag at all. His shit is vocals, and that's it. He right. said, now. He walked up with that mic in his hand and said, motherfuckers, I'm about to eat it. <laughs> and then Ralph came up, walked up with his little sensitive shit. You know what I'm saying? And the crowd is going off him because mm -hmm. Ralph is the group. You know what I mean? He walks up and he was just like, because I need somebody. Ooh. And the crowd going nuts. 
And I always said from that performance, I always felt that Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis was like, you're going to take the sensitive role. And that's why we're going to write sensitivity for you. Because hey. you going to capture that. Word. Yo, can, can we get and you, to, can like, we get you wow. to upload that that clip to Instagram, please? That's that's it. Oh, I sure will. I sure will. I'm going to put it up. I gotta, I, I'm, I'm, sure, it up. I'm positive I've seen it. But I can't think of it. No, I'm gonna like, send it to you. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something. My mind is all fucked up. My mind's all fucked up from Elise's shoulder, little shoulder thing. <laughs> I, I can't think of it right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit. Oh God! How did you? What, I'm blessed. How did y'all feel when they did the movie and the guys did it? You know, when they sung it in the movie and did you know with Luke James and all them? Did y'all feel like they? I mean, I, I felt the, the way I felt about it was the same way I feel about every other remake. You go mm. into it not wanting to like it already because it's not the original, right? That's me. Mm. Mm. So it's, it's like, hard to win you over. But I, 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 I mean, obviously they're, they're, you know, they're playing them in the movie, so I, mm. I, I get it. Obviously, I'm not, you know, a complete moron. Mm. But it was just one of those things, and it was like, okay, okay. But then I went and played. I'm going to give you the perfect example. You know, this Wu-Tang series on Hulu. Yesterday, yes. they yesterday they did they did Ghostface joint. So, you know, today I went to the gym and I played Iron Man. And I got the real shit. That's exactly <laughs> what, that's, that's what I do. Right? right? Okay, yeah, that shit was cute. Y'all did that was cute for the camera. Let me get this work. He did the cute. Work <laughs> so, you know, so whenever I would watch the series, which and, and, and yeah. I thought the series was good, I feel like there was uh, a couple key things that were left out. But I'm yeah, not gonna get into that the whole other thing. But you know, yeah. like I always do that when I see that. You know, like when, whenever I watch a documentary or I mm. watch, you know, a, a film or whatever, you know, that's based around an artist, I always go mm. back. To it. I do that every yeah. time. And nothing, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying because, like I said, this is literally, like I said, one of my top three favorite songs of all time, any genre. You in it? So you, you in it, yeah. This song is that. So you hard, that, you hard. Is that brilliant to me? Yeah. So yeah. you know, you hard with it. Cause if somebody gonna do it, you like, look, this is a top three song for me. Like, if you gonna do it, you gonna do it. And I mean, look, I look. You know who fell short when they did it to me? The boys, two men. Uh nah. I, I didn't I, like you, you it. You didn't like it. The acapella I joint, Ooh, I love that shit. I'm going to keep it real. I love it. I do. You I, did? I, I, I love, and I'm going to explain to you why I loved it. Because okay. to me, it was, it gave me a real vibe. All right. So you remember when they was like, uh, what, what, when, uh, in the video, the Motown Philly? Doom, 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 da, da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they was all together, like in, in, in a kind of like a cypher kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I hear that, I, I picture that. They on the mm. block with it, and they just trying to get you know, yo, let's fuck around it, and and that's the vibe it gives me. And they didn't take, you know, the actual you know beat and all of that. They just did the the acapella, and I feel like I've always fucked with the acapellas hard. Oh yeah, boys, first of favorite. all, boys to men. When I was a teenager, did no wrong. Let's let's clear that up first of all. They did no wrong <laughs> in, in, in that age, right? I go back now, and I'm like, damn, I like that shit. Shit, there's a few of them. I ain't gonna lie to you, but right that era. And it's like, but even that one now, when I listen to that, I just, I, I really like what they did with that, to be honest. Is it fucking with the original? No, because we'd be talking about no. the remake if we did. But, right, right, you right. You understand right, what I'm saying? Right. But they, they yeah. what, what I appreciated is that they made it their own with the acapella version. I can agree to that. I can get you with that. I can get that. I so get I it. I just was like, compare them. I kind of don't compare it because it's like I'm, just, I'm listening to a different song almost. Me. That's true. I'm That's not two true. stepping. I'm not two stepping to the boys to men shit. Like I'm two stepping to the new edition shit. You feel no. me? This shit I'm doing. I'm spinning. I'm twirling. Yeah. I'm sliding. Yeah. My two step is, is on one million. <laughs> <laughs> you know the boys to men shit. I'm just shitting. Ooh, you know what I mean? I'm just. I'm kicking it. Right, you know I mean? right. No, not, it's not. It's not the same. It doesn't give me the same vibe. So I don't really feel like I'm listening to the same shit. To be honest, That's I'm being completely. True. I can get, I can get, I can rock with. I because when they did, um, because before they put it on Evolution, they did that joint during the Cooley High Harmony era, and I liked it because they did Please Don't Go, and then they brought Can You Stand the Rain in, and I was like, that was so ill to me. I was like, cool, 
But then when I heard it on Evolution, I was like, Ugh. it's something. Mm. But it's sometimes when you do it live, you can't recapture it like doing it on the record. So it's like, maybe that's what I was looking for, to be honest. And then I'm serious. I'm like you, Easy. When it comes to Can't Stand the Rain, I'm hard with it. Like, you got to do that shit right. Because if you don't, then it's okay. like... But I can, I, can you respect, know what I, mean? I can respect it. You know, when it's like, yo, it's it's like, I, it's 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 the record is, bro, it's not no filler album cup bullshit. Right? Mm -hmm. Shot mm -hmm. high. Bro, if I'm going to go mm -hmm. fucking redo Wu-Tang, cash rules, everything around me, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to hold, you're going to hold that shit way up there and you should. So right. I, I get it. Right. I get it. I just liked it because. I appreciated that they 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 added their own shit to it. They wasn't really trying to be, you know, they they didn't really do exactly what they did to me. You know what right, I mean? I, and that's what I like too. And when and it comes to I singing, say I like. when, it, when it comes to just singing, like voice to man, come on, you got to give it to them. They would they, they be killer shit. That's that's true. That's true. Me, that's, that's me true. though. You know, and if, if, you know. Oh no, you in the same space? We love voice to man. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Like, I, yeah, like, I mean, yeah, and let me say I'm something about Boys with... to Men real quick. I be having to argue motherfuckers down, my Boys to Men, because they be doing that revisionist shit. No, listen, let me tell you something about Boys to Men. That shit is that fucking RB. I don't care how many records it fucking sold, all right? That part. It's RB. That part. Stop it. They be Stop irking it. the oh, hell out of me, yo, with that pop, pop shit. Oh, they was a pop group. No, oh, they, they weren't that bro. They were pop. You learn. Of course. And that's what makes it pop. Is when you sell a gazillion records, you pop by default. The shit is RB. Stop it. Anyhow, we don't you know think they were doing the same damn thing that fucking yeah. Jodeci was doing. The songs were damn near the same. Like, what are we talking about? You know, you know how it is, though. Houses. Like, Jodeci ain't blow up as hard. So everyone, you know. That's what it was. Because the they were just the for us. Or I like Jodeci better because they sold less records. They feel they feel like they know more than you when they go when they go that way. Oh please, yo, I, 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 <laughs> guys! I, I I apologize. I have to get the charger. My bad. My bad. Sorry. Nah, you good? No worries. I'm good. good. I'm good. But yeah, I feel really nice. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> shake your shimmy, sister. My bad. My bad. <laughs> We sure we got a whole lot of time. So shake your shimmy. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, pardon me, please. Pardon me. I apologize. Uh, slip on. Slip on. Where were we at? We was on Boys Man. We can get back to an audition if y'all want. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, again, I think this record is everything to me. Like Elise was saying, because I'm actually going to go to the show in like three weeks. They coming out here to Baltimore, and I'm actually going to the show. So this is a song, a signature song that they have to do. Because if they didn't do it, what would they do, Elise? <laughs> I said they'll ride that stadium. Well, they don't throw tomatoes. You, you, you yes. think you ain't going to think can't stand the rain if you think? <laughs> oh, no. Nah. You, 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 don't, you don't think they'd entertain that, though. And then you even know they did the shit on what's her name show, Sherry, and, and <laughs> Bobby wasn't even there then. And you just see him yeah. with the mic in his hand and he's swaying, even though he ain't even part of the song. Yeah. But this is a signature record for them. And Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis knocked it out the park for them. And I don't think anybody else could have gave them this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like doing that time anyway i don't think so that 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 album to me is is i love i love that album all together but that 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 record is to, to me is a standout for sure mm -hmm. okay. for sure yeah it's yeah my on well, any heartbreak my favorite um i always call it any heart but it's heartbreak the song is any heartbreak but my favorites are can you stand the rain and boys to me mm. Like th that will always be my eternal phase from this album. One week it'll be Boys to Men. One week it'll be Can't Stand the Rain. Like, Yo, like are you, no, you like that? Those songs like are just too? gems. Love it. Yo, but I'm saying no. I'm saying you like that. Like one day, like my favorite song is one. Oh and, yeah. And like the next couple of days, the shit just 
You know, that, depends, that shit wild to me. It depends on my I've been, head. I, I've been listening to um you you guys, man. I really I really need you guys' help. I need I I don't I don't dig like I should for the R like the new the new good R and B. So I feel like I'm missing out on a lot. But I've been playing oh, I've the, uh, some lists. Yeah, please, please. I, I like the new Eric Bellinger, Bellinger joint, and I was listening to it the other day, and like, I'm like, damn, I like this one today, but I like the other one, a, a different one, a couple days later. You know, I thought mm -hmm. I was the only one. I thought I was the nah, only one. Nah, it's I that. Because what, it, depends, it depends on my headspace. It depends on what else I've been listening to lately. So, yeah. you know, I kind of been really in my hip-hop bag. Does it, does it depend on how your shoulders feel? <laughs> the whiskey you're drinking? <laughs> what else? <laughs> what else? Fact? No, I want to know. Oh, shit, shit, that's for me. Wine. Shit, that's for me. What kind yes, of whiskey yeah. I'm drinking? Because I'm sorry, I might like you can't stay in the rain one day, but I'll fuck with you're not my kind of girl the next. So I'm just. <laughs> and then fair. some days, and since some days I want to be like, you got it going on, going on, going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. It depends. Yes. Well, well, and some, some days understood. I want to hear the whole album. You know. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But can't you, you stay know. in the rain? You got to hear it. Like, you got to hear that. It don't matter. Like, it might be the day you be like, yeah, I just want to hear Is in Love, but you can't leave Heartbreak without playing Can You Stay in the Rain. Come on now. If it like, isn't love, I'll be doing, I'll be trying to do the infinite, the little steps. You know, I'll mean? be doing all that. Don't play, man. I got zero dance moves, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know the choreography to that. that yeah, all right. I mean, JR know all choreography. He know choreography to everything. <laughs> And he gonna make sure you know it too. Yeah, and, and that, <laughs> that you know that he know it. You have, I, I, I you have to appreciate. You gotta appreciate the passion for music, uh -huh. man. It's a, it's a real genuine passion. I appreciate. Mm -hmm. that. Like yo, mm -hmm. my my man, my man would be like, yo, you know, um, this is the shit that bugged me out about JR. He'd be like, yeah, you know, in 1962, I'm like, motherfucker, where were you in 1962? You know what I'm saying? Start talking about Motown and you shit. Really? We really, we really no, got to it. No, it's impressive. It's impressive. You know, because, oh, because, you know, listen, listen. Like, like, we're going to pick on you because we assholes, but it's impressive. No, I, it, get no, it. It I get it. I get it's it. It's impressive. It's not it. a shot, brother. I'm, I'm, giving, you, I I'm giving you props for that. I, I genuinely appreciate that shit is dope. Like, like work. Because, yeah. you know, I, was, I wasn't, I didn't grow up in the Rock Kim, Kane era, but I went back. Right, so no right, 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 right. It's no different. Yeah. Hip-hop ain't, oh, yeah. hip ain't go back that far. You feel me? <laughs> so I got right, to that's back, real. That far back, too. So I'm like, damn, he's going back there? Shit. Yeah. You, know? well, you got a mama that I, did I that. That's that her. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So that's, 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 that's dope. Like, you know, that's real passion is wanting to learn the history, wanting to know the history, understand the history. And when you know that, you know, when you start at the beginning, you understand everything that came after. You want to say what I'm saying? That's why, as much as I give the stylistics a lot, because at least know I do, but I haven't recently. And to know that Jimmy Jam was inspired to do this from the stylistics, it's like, how am I going to like this song and not like the stylistics? It's kind of like weird, because if your favorites love the stylistic, how are you not going to like it? So when he said it, and I would always think, why did I give the stylistics so much shit? Like, why did I do that when mm. Jimmy Jam is like, we were inspired to make Can You Stand the Rain but You Make Me Feel Brand New? It's like, <laughs> all right, got you know, it. Man, you, just, you just needed to hear that. I, that's that, You need yeah. to respect it, brother. You're not yeah. you're a human being. It's I, okay. I needed JR to say that for validation to my soul because he was giving my voice a lot. I knew she and, was gonna say that. I knew but it. I knew you would come to your senses. You always do. <laughs> <laughs> it took a <laughs> it took a while though. But I appreciate it. Took it took a while. It took a minute. No it doubt. took a minute. It Slow motion minute. is still motion. So I, I did that part. There we go. There we go. I'm there. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. Better than no motion. <laughs> so, right. so you, you said you said new edition is going on tour. I wasn't even aware of that. Yeah, it's been really? Like the last... They were going now. I didn't know. I'm, I'm going to keep it real, man. I, be... I, I can't even remember a time in like the last 10 years that they won't. I'm the king right. of minding my business. Just so y'all know that. I see that. I, I see. reign supreme. You know yes, what I'm saying? <laughs> if it ain't got nothing to do with me or Elisa's shoulders, I really don't know much about it. <laughs> I didn't keep that. <laughs> 
he yeah they on tour with the legacy tour. I think this is gonna be it though. That's for to sure. me. I think this is they gonna close yeah, it seen, out after this. I've seen New Edition in concert six times. The first time was in nineteen eighty nine. Ooh. Wow. Wow. It was one it was it wasn't my Yeah, it was my first concert. You ever been seasoned. To. Yes. That's why them shoulders roll the way they do. You are seasoned. She's seasoned right? in this tour right? and shit. Yeah. It's wild though, <laughs> because yo, I be finding out, I literally be finding out like people be on tour on my Instagram story. Cause you know motherfuckers can't just watch the show. They gotta be like, yo. They gotta oh no. And yeah, I'm like, oh shit, they came out. I didn't even know they was out here. That's how I be finding out. No. That's crazy. Yeah, that's I'm how watching I the concert. I don't, I don't really be. Come on, you got, you got new edition guy. Keep sweat. Mm -hmm. That's a and, good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I forgot who opened it. It could be Tank, I think. I, I don't know. I and Tank. in some cities, it's a little bit different. So, oh, like the okay. lineup, it's like a slight. Okay, thing. that but makes yeah. sense. So you get you get the hometown guy, you know, that's up the street. You bring them in. That makes sense. They, they do that a lot. Yeah. 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 Nah, and but, then I was also yeah. telling JR at the concerts, yeah, like all those hit singles, like, yeah, they can't leave without singing them, but they also cannot leave without singing Boys to Men. Mm. And they even talked about that there behind the music. Like, that became like yeah. this deeper song. Yeah, yeah. It's this mm -hmm. deep, the deepest of cuts. And that's the song like that they just and John, Johnny, he, Johnny, I love Johnny Gill, um, a lot, and he, he, we he goes, do. we all do. He, he goes ham, he goes bananas on that shit. Are you an R and B lover? Do you really love R and B? If you don't fuck with Johnny Gill, though, like, do you really fuck with R and B? Not in my eyes. You see what I'm saying? Not, not in my eyes. eyes. He's just, just not in my eyes. Just eyes. So, if you don't like Johnny, I don't think you could be though, my right? friend. Jimmy. You guys is you guys is opinion and expertise. Yeah, yeah, I know, y'all know what it is. Yeah, I right? uh, look. So if you like, not come like on, a Johnny, man, Summerall. come on. You oh, I don't fuck with Johnny Gill. Okay, you fucking you listen to grunge music, bro. Go that way. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right. Like let's be let's be real, bro. Can you be an R and B lover and not if fuck you with don't Johnny? like Johnny? Right, uh -huh. right. Come on, come on, man. Some 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 things yeah. are just like they're just like you know opinionated facts. You know that what I'm saying? Part. Like that part. It, they opinions with their facts. I, I love that one of one of my besties, Maxine. Like I was like going off about Johnny Gill, and she was about to say something, and I thought she was about to like shit on him or whatever. And when I found out she was like a bigger Johnny Gill fan than I was, I was like, I knew he was this term. <laughs> <laughs> word, word. Nah, Johnny, Johnny, a bad boy. <laughs> I'm just happy. I'm so happy that Johnny got to get with New Edition, so the world got to see how talented he was because you know he was he was stuck with just us and not getting mainstream attention and all this and once he got with new edition it was like everybody was the mainstream was seeing what we've been seeing for years you know what i'm saying and they finally get to see it and even though me and elise kind of give him fever for my 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 but that's what everybody loved you know what i mean so they got to hear johnny i mean shit after can you stand the rain it was like People heard him like it was like, yo, y'all hearing what we've been hearing for years. Like, what? Yo, you know what I mean? So I'm so happy that it was it was it was brilliant that they brought him into the group mm -hmm. and it helped them become the men. It was like the Jacksons joined. Yeah. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? They landed the way to put it. To go get no way to put it. I love yeah. what this album did for them to let them springboard and do the solo things and the group things. Yes. Like, I just love what this album did for them. Yes, it's very important, and people don't understand that. I, know, I feel like another, impo another important thing about the record itself is that this shit is like a template. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people was chasing that. That when, that, when that's, you, you know how it is. You know it's a game changer. You know? Yeah. Oh, this shit pop. We all got to do that. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy, Jim, Jimmy and Terry, can you give us one? Of, can you give us a? Can you stay in the rain? Can, can you imagine the phones must have blown? Can you give us a? Can you stay in the rain? It's a game changer. You know? Well, it was. was probably like no, yeah, we can't. We only can well, we'll give it to new We'll give you another one that's a smash, though. We, we <laughs> right, but we ain't giving you can for you. We're not yeah. just gonna right exactly. exactly. We can give right. you the right song for you, which yeah. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis are the kings of. 
of right. giving the right song to the right individual or to the right group, you know? Right. Yes. And, that, and that's right. the thing, though. Like, this is this is the thing what separates the label from the creatives. And this is off topic, but I'm going to say it anyway. The label just thinking money, right? Oh, that shit made Bass. money. I don't want that. But Bass. the creatives are thinking, this is not, I, I could write a Can You Stay in the Rain for JR, but that's not who he is. He needs my, my, my. He needs, you know, something. You understand what I'm saying? I got you. Got that's you. That's something that the creative, the labels don't get that. And that's why, that's why the uh, the the errors change so much in music because everyone's chasing that, that sound, right? The shit make no fucking sense at all, but everybody's chasing, oh, well, the shit worked for them. It don't mean it's going to work for you. You understand what I'm saying? That I love, I love hearing that the part. stories about, I love hearing the stories about, yo, I wrote this song for such and such. Well, I'm glad such and such ain't sing it because that shit wouldn't have been the smash that it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> word. Like, oh, they passed on this or or they you wrote it for this person. It just you wasn't. Know, I, get, I hear that shit all the time with my with my hip hop buddies. Yo, I made this beat for such and such. I made this beat for such. Good. I'm, ga- I'm glad they passed on it. We wouldn't have got this joint. Mm-hmm. That's, that's mm-hmm. the difference between the labels and the um and the creatives, you know. And, and you know, e- even the new edition, just the, the band, the boy band model that alone mm. was so you know game changing groundbreaking and, and and you know they tried to copy it a bunch of times you know but that 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 model alone all, all the shit that came after man boys to man all the little white boy bands and all that shit that shit all came from new edition you know so we Real. gotta gotta salute them you know shout out to johnny the only member not from boston but i still fucks with johnny I was waiting for that. You, I'm, I'm just waiting, waiting for it. Oh, I was that waiting just, for it. That, I was waiting but, for hey, it. That just shows how unbiased that I am. Right. 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 You know, that just shows how because Johnny's Johnny, man. I'm not I'm not about to sit here on a show with the R and B reps in front of Johnny. <laughs> how would I look? How would I look? I'd be banned. Right? <laughs> right? Correct. JR, JR Correct. have a post on as well with my face with the with the red circle with the line through it. <laughs> the no smoking sign oh, with my God face not. in it. No. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't come in here in front on Johnny. You crazy? I don't care where he's from. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, he is he. That's all that's that's always been my thing. Just make sure and where you mm-hmm. from is whatever. Secondary. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't about where you from is how dope are you? That's that's what I care about. That's it. That part. That's that it. Part. That's it. That part, girl. You know what I'm saying? So, we thank you for hanging out with us. This is I appreciate awesome. you guys having me, man. We got to do this one more time sometime soon. <clears throat> one more time. I know. I know. One I took, more. I took, I took a long time to, 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 I don't know why. He did. He did. All I, I had to, yeah. all I had to do was push a couple buttons, man. I don't know what happened. You know what yes. Man? You know, I think, I think my mind was in the future and I got distracted by the shoulder, this whole shoulder thing. And I, <laughs> I couldn't think of it, but I'm here now and it won't yes. happen. Oh, I'm, no. I'm all, listen, I'm keeping, I'm already thinking about the next song. You know, I might go through. Everybody this, says that. Everybody I might says go through that. this extensive CD collection over here and figure it out tonight. <laughs> right? I might do that, but I'm definitely um, going, I'm definitely going to stream. Can you stand the rain about six times consecutively? Once we get off, because word, it's Me just too. that classic, and I think everybody that watches this should, and I think everybody should subscribe to the R&B Rest because not only are they, you know, dope ass people, they have a passion for music that I believe everybody shares, right? Um, you're here because you love music. I'm here because I love music and I appreciate music, and I appreciate very, very. people who appreciate music. You know, I never met y'all ever in my life in person, you know, and I feel like I know y'all. You feel me? I feel like y'all right. call me. I feel like you guys call me personally to bring the light skin to the show, and I appreciate that. You know <laughs> I, I appreciate that shit, man. <laughs> I feel like I'm family. So you, you know, are, so, you are. <laughs> I really know, baby. It's all good, man. My shit, my my light skin, beautiful. It's all good. I really, <laughs> really hate this show. I don't know why y'all watch it, but I'm glad that you do. Nah, it's on <laughs> fire, man. And you can't oh, stop. God. You can't stop. Because what happens is, like, you know, it, it, it's, you know, I know we're doing the, the, the little mini joint right now. But, you mm-hmm. know, I be, paying, I be paying attention, you know, and I subscribe to the channel, obviously, and all that. But, you know, you put you put in this light on R&B. Because, obviously, it, it isn't what it once was. But that is in regards to the mainstream. 
Mm-hmm. R&B's, not, R&B's not dead. You got to find it. You got to support it. And it's the same, same with every genre. Same with the hip-hop shit. Same with everything. There's plenty of good R&B. Like I said to y'all earlier, man, you know, please, you know, like, point me in the right direction. I feel like I'm behind on some shit. You know, I, I, I keep it real. I'm not one of them guys that's going to come here and I got to know everything. I mean, I can't, I can't do that. But, you know, you we, have to, we have to support it. Yeah. We have to continue to... uh to love and appreciate it. We got to continue to, you know, um, sing with the hairbrush with, as the microphone in the house and the broom and perform in the kitchen while we're cleaning. And, you know, continue to be Brian McKnight in the shower. I'm always going to do that. You know, that's how you keep this, that's how you keep this shit alive and the spirit love never this. dies. Love you know it. what I'm saying? You that's how the spirit don't die. Is that, that type of shit, man. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, when you grab, when you, you know, the, the grabbing the air while you singing and shit. Right? Where there's nothing there. Yes. You, know? you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Your veins just pop them out like KC in the desert. You know what I mean? You gotta <laughs> keep that shit, you gotta keep that shit alive, B. You know, because RB is a beautiful genre. It, it's it's just, you know, like I said, me as a hip hop person, I will never, ever, 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 ever front on RB because without RB there's no hip hop. That's just what it is. That's just what Max. the fuck is. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. So um, yeah, I appreciate you guys for continuing to, you know, keep that fire lit and, and continuing to put the spotlight on the shit that I love. And, you know, it's like, you know, I love women, man. I can't be playing Mob Deep when I'm trying to get my shit off. Be like, you know, I need some R&B, bro. Like, I'm fucking playing, you know what I mean? You know? Real. I mean, at least, at, least, at least might give me one of these to some Mob Deep, but not everybody, you know? I'm you know what I'm saying? So we got to continue to... Yeah, <laughs> you're right, right. You see, she's like, Yeah, oh, right. she's smart. Ooh. Yo, but mm-hmm. again, I appreciate you guys having me. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm here, man. Whenever you know, whenever, y- whenever y'all are bored, and I'm welcome, I'm here. Yes, and love is love. Yeah, and we love thank you love, always. Yes, we thank you. We also thank our viewers. We, you know, we become quite a family here. From the guests mm-hmm. to the people that watch it in the live chat, everything like it's it's become like a really like dope tight knit thing, you know. And I love that. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I guess and we you know, will catch the, the, oh. the little Zoom, the little Zoom shit. This little Zoom thing is cool for me because yeah. it's safe, right? Because when I'm flirting with Elise, Jr. not can't sucker punch me because I'm all the way over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm safe. <laughs> I like I like this. I hate this show. <laughs> I, I'm done, man. I'm done. I, yo, but much love. I appreciate y'all, man. For real. This is real, awesome. This is awesome. But we love y'all. Y'all are cousins. This we know for sure. And we will catch y'all on the next episode of Catch That. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Mm. Hey y'all, and welcome back to another fan mini episode of Catch That, where we get to know our friends through their favorite R&B songs. I am Naturally Elise, and that's my bro. Jr. And we are the R&B representatives. We have a special return guest who we love talking to. He's a joy, and his name is Rel. What up? What's up? What's up? Happy to be here again. Happy to be back. Got a good one. Got a yeah. good one. Yes. So just real quick for folks who might not have caught your uh, previous episodes, just a little bit about yourself and um, yeah. Well, I am from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, part of the Apartment 5E podcast in the hip hop, real heavy. But also, you know, um, through, through my mother and other people were exposed to all different types of music including r&b and uh so i have a little bit you know a little bit of knowledge not like y'all but i know a little bit of something um i was an artist still i'm an artist still working on music and i that's it that's me your boy yeah so how about you tell us 
what song that you picked to talk about today and if you remember the first time hearing it. Yeah, so it's Boys the Man, it's Please Don't Go. And uh, when I first heard it, uh, I had the tape. <laughs> I had the cassette tape. Yeah, and, you know, I had, you know, they were from Philly, so they were automatically getting, you know, getting love for me anyway. Like, I was going to give it a chance and listen to it, but just listening to the tape, like, that was the song that stuck out to me. Um, and it still sticks out to me for several reasons that we're going to get into when you think of their career, because um, it's just a different song than what I'm you're used to from them. So it just stuck out for me. Like I, it's my favorite boys of men song. So. Yes. Yeah. It, it is also like me and Jay are very excited when you pick that because it's my favorite boys of men song. I, yes, it is. I have to think about it because my favorites change. Today it is. Okay. Um, and <laughs> is that your favorite, JR, or it's up there for you? I can't remember. It's it's it, it's top five for sure. Yeah. So we top were five. we were very excited that you picked that. Plus, me and JR, we really we act, we really love Boys to Men anyway. And um so we were, oh, we were very well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's so dope that you that you pick this song because it's also it's also dope that you pick this song because there's so many different elements in this song that are great. So yeah, let's let's get into it. <laughs> I like the fact that they opened the album with this song. Like there was no games. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like off the break. And I think this song says a lot of the characteristics of each of them. Like mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. come the album it's like all right we're learning them it's for them who's gonna do what you know what i'm saying so obviously the first person we hear is mike so mike mm -hmm. is, is fucking melvin solid night tip like mm -hmm. right or christmas like mm -hmm. that's him you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying like that is, that's him so it's like all right and then sean comes in with like that smooth voice you know what i'm saying and then Nate comes in and does his little Nehu type of shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then afterwards, you get Wanye that's going to run all day long and run you from here to, yes, back to New York, all that shit. Yes, so you kind of got the characteristics of all of them in the song. And that's what one thing I do like, that everybody got shined on the record. You know what I mean? Right. Everybody. Right. No matter what they were doing, somebody they shined it so that's one thing i really loved about the records real right mm -hmm. i think for me um <laughs> and you know y'all can kind of help me with this but the melody in comparison to the music it just seems offbeat but it works to me i don't know i don't know what it i don't know what it is like the way it's <laughs> sung and the way the music it just it seemed like it shouldn't fit, but it fit perfect. Like it's just perfect. Like I, like when I hear it, like with Boys and Men, they're so like structured and clean, and this is not that. You know what I'm saying? This is stripped down, and it's I don't know. It just works, man. It it works, and like the melody, the melodies are not. They don't fit, but they work. If you know what I'm saying? I don't know how to explain it. You know what I'm saying? I get it. Because you could definitely tell by the two album, they was right. everything right, everything was clean cut, everything was fine. Even though they were pushing them for that for this debut, it was like we heard the rawness of their voices. So, raw, I mean, yeah. plus Dallas Austin, I mean, at the end of the day, like how Elise says, God, I'm damn, why I got to be shady, but that's just me. Uh, you know, at least how we talk about Escape and how Jermaine Dupri wasn't a vocal producer. Like, he wasn't a vocal producer, so he didn't really know how to vocally produce them. Dallas, on the other hand, he just finished dealing with ABC, a bunch of kids. Mm -hmm. So he got these four vocal dudes, and it's like, he got to finesse this. You know what I'm saying? So it, it probably was kind of tough for them. That's why... You see, once they got into the road with Babyface, shit changed. It was just like right. everything right. was 
straight. Everything was clean cut. Everything was good. There was nothing off, nothing. But right. in the same breath, I think it was needed because we want to hear the rawness of their voices. We want to know that all of them can sing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's interesting that you you bring it up, Jr. Because uh, me and Jr. was in a group chat today, and I was talking about how um, things, a, a lot of things, can be overproduced, and sometimes mm. they take the character out of of a not perfect vocal. And sometimes you need, and, and not necessarily a bad vocal, but you need a rawness to it or a moment where they kind of catching the spirit a little bit, like. And you kind of you gotta let them loose a little bit. You could control, but it has it needs to be like a controlled chaos, I guess. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and you, you, if you hold on too tight, you just choke all the life out of the song. So exactly. this was a song where they let where the production let them breathe. Now he didn't know they was letting them breathe. He wasn't experienced, so it just right. kind of happened that way. But he had just enough a hold on them to to give you this great song. Yeah, because oh, yeah. like I, you know, I love a good uh, don't. Don't leave me. I miss you. I love it. <laughs> There's a theme. You know, I love, yeah. This is the second Your song one. Your songs have definitely let us know what you like. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, this fits right. This fits right in, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's like, uh, like you were saying, like, um, it just worked for me. You know what I'm saying? When I first heard it, it was my favorite song on the album immediately. Like, you know what I'm saying? First listen. I was like, oh, yeah, I like and, this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And their harmonies and, and blends is what really you pay attention to. Like, I love the call and response. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like when, you know what I'm saying, I can't let this love slip away and I can't turn it around. Can't you see? Like that. <laughs> like, I love that. Oh, that my part God. is that like, part is fire. That yes. part is fire. That part like, is fire. Oh. I that part like, is fire. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they knew that Sean needed to be the lead for this record. Because you mm-hmm. could not let Wanye be the lead for this, because he would have took it all over the place. That's right. why I'm, so, right. I'm glad that was the first voice that we we really heard. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it probably went off. That's why I'm glad that their cover of, um, how could I say, what is it? It's so hard to say goodbye. They let Wanye kind of just go off and let it rip. But by then, we already know them. We know them from Motown Philly. We right, know them right, from right. all that. So by the time they got to this fourth single, Ugh. And it was kind of like you kind of knew you kind of knew him, so it was kind of like, all right, Sean is what was needed on this record. You know, what and I'm, I'm all, and I'm I'm always for I'm always for like the not the most popular person getting shine. Like for me, like in groups. Remember, I asked you about uh I asked you about um Taj's part in uh Use Your Heart. You yes. know, what I'm saying like. Stuff like that, like I'm, I'm all for that in a group, in a group dynamic. Like getting to hear that, like everybody can, can contribute and do their part. You know what I'm saying? No matter how great the, the main, the more popular person is, like hearing that everybody can, can do their thing. Like those usually be my favorite songs, and you know what I'm saying parts. Uh, okay. And one thing I always, I had always liked about Boys to Men, and it's kind of what um I liked about like say an in vogue is when they would go on shows, them them hosts would ask them to sing on command and they would and they would sound mm. amazing. And you mm. knew they all could sing. They did it the in vogue and they did it the boys and men. Yeah, they did. And they ain't yeah. never be like, nah, nah, they'd be ready. They're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and not everybody can do that. Yeah. Most so, people yeah. can, even great singers, like yeah. to just Especially a group. Yeah. yeah right. Oh yeah. Especially with and and speaking of that, I love when they um the it's on YouTube and it's a clip of them singing Don't Let I Me mean, uh Please Don't Go and Can't You Stand the Rain. Mm. 
they are doing it and the way is so dope. But you could tell by this time they are polished. But it's right, still right. dope. You know what I'm saying? Like it's this is what you call it, ain't got the high top fade no more. He was the only one that was that cut it, Wanye. Right. Everybody else still had their high top fade and he had his ball. Like so and you could tell this was end of the road ish. And you could tell, but yo, the difference from that performance but when they did unplug. Because if you listen to the unplugged joint, you can see a little bit of the nervousness still there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But Sean still ate, though. You know what I mean? Right. Even though, like I said in our uh, Black Street video, <laughs> instead, the Black Street, they were wearing the blue Sears jackets. Boys, the men was wearing <laughs> brown Sears jackets. <laughs> yeah, I was like, MT yo, MTV must have gave them the same shit oh for the different God. color outfit. Nobody. Did you say Sears, bro? Yes, that's right. Right off the clearance rack. Yeah. Sears and Robot. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a but you, but you know something? Oh, the polish uh thing is the gift and the curse because you have to have a certain amount of polish to kind of get a mainstream or go to the next level of just being kind of local group. Mm -hmm. But with that polish, you lose a little something in, you know, in later albums. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the, yeah. It's you can like, I need a little of that. Right. Right. You, you could tell by freaking album number two, you could tell there was the, the rawness was now cut. You know what I'm saying? It was like you wasn't they don't getting. Let it, like, yeah, they so only let it slip in with a few, like on two. Like you can still hit, like it's a few songs where you're like, okay, that that's my Cooley High Harmony Boys, right? But, but it's like, but so much of it's so produced. I mean, they were great, you know, great songs. I do enjoy that album a lot, but mm -hmm. um, it was it was just so different. So was this? Yeah. Was this their? Best album to you guys? What was their it, best album? I think so. Cool, yeah, yes, absolutely, okay. hands okay. down. Two, ugh, ugh, two had a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it's their most soulful album. Um, yeah. Right, 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 right. It's yeah for me. Like boys and men, they started to get I don't know a little out of my. Out of what I wanted to hear, I guess a little bit. Like I loved uh, on bending knee. I like me too. I I, I love I love that. But they just started to get. I don't know. I can't explain it. Just a little too sappy for me. But that was more so the <laughs> singles. But it kind of just drew me away from the complete albums for for. I don't I don't know why. Like which but is why makes... this. Yeah, which is why this song is my favorite because this is like, yeah, you know, this is this is right up my alley. Like, the, I'll reach out my hand to you. That's my favorite part. Like, to the, I'll, it just sound like that that melody just sound like it don't fit, but it's perfect for me. I I just can't explain it, yo. Yeah. <laughs> it was, but uh, but but Rel, it makes sense that you kind of you know got away from it because think of what was going on in music at that time like what they were doing it wasn't the the popular sound anymore right you know? right, right, right. Right, right um you, right. the 90s music changed swiftly every few years you kind of had a different thing going on and that made it really hard for our any r&b acts especially groups right, as well. right. you're right about that too because i was saying kind of like the start of this song kind of gives you the feeling of what was hot around that time. And it was mm -hmm. these type of songs. It was kind of like the Ready or Not from After Seven and Love Me Down from um, Freddie Jackson and, and Keep Sweat, I'll uh, Give All My Love To You. It sounded like that. You know what I'm saying? So by the time that they got to two, they saw that, okay, this end of the road shit sold for them. So we going to work them there. Right. So we gonna the I'll make love to you and water runs dry and all of that. Even though 
on in the same breath, other groups was doing the same thing. It was just a change in imagery and all that kind of stuff. But you could relate to them because they look like us. You know what I'm saying? And hip hop started to become bigger. So they were no longer it. And then when they tried with evolution and they tried to wear the jeans and shit, everybody looking at them like, nah, this ain't y'all. Like who, who ushered in the 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 evolution of of the changing of the sound? Like who who who's responsible? Their counterparts, which was Jodeci. <laughs> okay. I mean, when they did the come and talk to me remix, that kind of changed. Right, 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 and right. Mary came in and took what they did, that come and talk to me, and Puff saw that it worked. It was like, all right, we're going to put it on her. And once it went commercial, it was like, uh-oh, uh-oh. And it was easy for Jodeci to kind of transition in because they was already looking like us. So it was like, all mm -hmm. right, they can sing My Heart Belongs to You, and we good with it. Boys the Men was giving us the flavor of the tips and the four top. That was for our parents. And it was no okay. longer that anymore. It was kind of like, nah, that was old. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can sit there and wear them suits and ties. We ain't with that no more. You know what I mean? So, But it's so funny because when you see Jodeci singing back of Father MC, what were they dressed like? Boys the Men. Like Nate, Sean, not Juan Yeh. <laughs> yeah. They were. They were. <laughs> they had on the same as that. The the tie with the bag suit, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like mirror image. Yeah. They had the whole Alexander Van Der Poel. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you said it because I can never say that shit. <laughs> yeah. Never. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, but, but when you look at the songs and lyrically, like, like the hit songs, those songs don't don't Jodeci songs don't really sound too much different than the Boys and Men songs. No, definitely the same lyrically. Yeah, but right. the image was different. Now we'll say the production was different, but I mean, like as far as the structure of the songs was the same, but it it was a little bit edgier production on the Jodeci side. I will say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though you had everybody, but they were saying the same shit. Yeah, damn near yeah. verbatim. Kill, kill swear they they wasn't. He swear. He oh, swear you saw it. when I me and him. I had to get it. I had to go off because I was like, "Kill, you full of it." Because you not listening to these songs. See, you just not giving boys them no chance because of what they look like. But right. if you listen to both of these songs lyrically, it's nothing different. Like they're both begging. Like yeah, what more? Yeah. And they even say to the song, "Baby, I'm begging," and this is the group that you trying to clown like. No, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, but I had a whole bridge saying, "Baby, I'm begging." A whole bridge, a mm -hmm. whole bridge. At least boys, the men ain't had that. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right, like, right, like right, it right. was begging. Well, no, bend the knee. They kind of said it, but yeah. Oh, right, right. You right. You right. <laughs> you right. Think about that. You right. They did. Which say again, it. they're saying they were doing the same thing lyrically, but the imaging and Jodeci had a little bit edgier production. I think. So so I, why why wasn't because this was a single I didn't even know why didn't it like blow up or why did it get overlooked? Yeah, I did, and I always have a problem with it. I'm glad you brought that up, Rev, but I always have an issue with it because it's between two songs that clearly the label was pushing. They were pushing aha. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? They was pushing the hell out of that record. And then they did a remix, remember? Like, a remix to that record. So the label was really pushing that record, and it became a number one R&B record and a top 20 pop record. So by the time you get to the fourth single, Please Don't Go, they not putting no real money behind it because mm -hmm. they don't put so much money behind Motown Philly. They don't put so much behind It's Hard to Say Goodbye. They don't put so much behind uh uh they don't put so much behind it. By the time the fourth single come around, everybody has the record. And we don't know what's coming, but they know what's coming, which was End of the Road. End of the Road. So oh, they're like, God. all right, we had enough. And then they brought the album. Then they made a special release of the album. They re-released it with End of the Road and Still of the Night and all of that on it. So they was just like, oh, 
we just gonna put this out there, let right. it go, because we know end of the road is about to kill it. It's and we about to put so much money and it, it got lost. Cause could y'all imagine if this joint would have got a video, it would have got money put behind it, it would have probably did better than it did. If y'all didn't put no promotion behind it and it was a top 10 RB single and a top 50 pop record, could you imagine if y'all would have put the money in a video? It probably could have been another top 10 pop joint for them. Right, right. Exactly. But they didn't, but I guess they didn't need it. Uh but, right. And then, um, and Rail, you said this before uh, before we got started. It's the it's the first song on the album. Right. So you, you know, you were like, no, me and you were talking. I was saying, I I never. It was a top whatever song, but I never remember hearing it on the radio. Me neither. Me neither. Me neither. Me neither. I heard uh, I on the radio, um, especially on the Quiet Storm, but mm -hmm. um. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't ever remember hearing this song on the radio. Mm -hmm. but, but it's the first song I ever heard off of Coolie Eye Harmony after Motown <laughs> Philly because I bought the record right after Motown Philly yeah. came right. out. So after right. that, that was the first song I heard on this. The Did record. you know what to expect after hearing Motown Philly? No. I, I no. didn't. I was like, no. I, yeah, I didn't know what I was going to get mm -hmm. from the album. And then I hear this song first. I'm like, I yeah. thought it was about to be a new Jack Swing record. Right. Kinda. Right. 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 With a couple slow jams. That's what. Right. Yeah. I yeah. had no idea that they were. But I also was very young, so I kind of didn't know. I was kind of off of the energy and excited. It was yeah. these four dudes, and, yeah. you know, they yeah. they was going on the show, and they, you know, they was doing that doom, 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 da, da, you know, on mm -hmm. every show. So I was just like, I just wanted to, I was intrigued. <laughs> right, 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 right. I was right. excited. Yeah, me too. Even though this is the album my mom brought home, because it was like, during that time, it was like a lot of hip hop. So my mom was like, all right, let me give him some <laughs> for a second. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because my dad was really the one bringing a lot of this uh, hip hop in. So my mother's like, okay, all right, let, let me cool it down for a minute. Because mm -hmm. this time she brought in Tevin. So I got Tevin and boys and men at the same time. So it's like, yeah. She was like, let me cool him down for a second. And mind you, me, I'm. this is the year I'm starting to really pay attention to music for myself. So I'm paying attention to a lot of what they doing on this record. And I'm just like, ooh. And coming out of church, too, I'm hearing that call and response is getting me, too. And I'm yeah. like, ooh. Ooh, ma, look what they doing. And she like, mm -hmm, yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> Yeah. Off of this hip hop person. Right. Mm -hmm. and then they, you know, the name of Motown Philly made so much sense because they were taking these very Motown elements with these very Philadelphia record power behind mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so that made all the sense. That who who discovered them? Michael Bivens. It was Michael Bivens? It was Michael Bivens mm -hmm. that discovered? Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He, was, he was on a the roll there. Oh, listen. Yeah, he said, check this one out. See if this one moves you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. I like how you did that. <laughs> he, he was, uh, he was, that's why Michael was all thing. over, you know, over, you know, you know, videos and promote, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, because see, and then I remember with Sean, see, he looked like my cousin Desmond, he looked like him. So he was the one that we always focused on because he looked like him. So we'd be like, oh, and then I remember him from the all for one and one for all when it was all the big 10 together. Uh, oh my gosh. No, you did not. Yeah. Do, man. <laughs> do you remember the first, uh, this one thing about that video I always remember, the first kid, his name was Fruit Punch. Do you remember Fruit that Fruit Punch, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yes! I remember that. Oh. And, you know, you're gonna have me go look that video up, man. Yo, and there's so many of them in it. What's her name? Yvette Brown is in it. Mm -hmm. She's in it. Um, obviously ABC is in it. He had he was the puff before the puff. You know what I'm saying? Like he had so many acts. Like he was like, yo, he had everybody, everybody's in that video. So when you 
So boys, the men come in and you hear Sean and Sean's voice is mad smooth. And then that's the first voice you hear on the album. So it was like, that was smart. Like it was marketing for real because it was like, they could have had anybody else singing lead on that record, but they didn't. They had Sean. And then when you get the album, it's like, okay, I know him from, you know, Motown Philly, but I could, if you didn't, you know him from the one, all for one video. So it's like, all right. And then you hear him come in on Please Don't Go. You're like, oh, yeah, I know that voice. Okay, cool. You know what I mean? So I think that was, it was brilliant. I mean, shit, that's why I freaking Michael Business was like, man, I'm about to be a businessman in this motherfucking industry because he made bread off Boys of Men. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yo, he said he oh, spent, he said he spent 700000 just to make the debut, the album. And the album ended up selling $13 million. Ooh, you know how much he can what? Ooh, he put mm. that up on his own and made all that money back. Really? Plus That's... more. Yeah. And, and didn't even have to do him dirty to do it. No, he didn't. And said, look, and gave him they published it and said, y'all can have it. Y'all so didn't... hold on. So hold on. So you don't have to do people dirty in the industry. It's crazy. No. It's crazy, right? You I thought you had to do. That's what I. I thought you had to. So you don't have to. Okay, okay. That's a conversation for another. <laughs> you don't. You don't. I was shocked when he said because I'm like you, real like for real. Like I'm thinking everybody's first contract sucks. It's the worst. You getting the worst because you signing with a production deal and you signing with the label and you signing with all this. Michael Bivins was like, "Look, I took my money, gave them back their publishing, and it was like go." Go. Mm. Y'all did all the motherfucking work. Why would I take all your money? Why? Yeah. You know, some people get hurt and want to hurt other people. Some people get hurt and try to change things. Uh, did the latter. Uh, Think of all the new edition, all the shit they went through. They went through, yeah. right. And he yeah. wasn't going to put so I guess he said, I'm not going to do this to these dudes that look up to us. Right. Like, right. that's it's right. one of those rare stories in the music business. Yeah. <laughs> never hear nobody talking bad about Michael Vin. None of the groups that he had, nobody talks bad about him at all. Him and Jermaine Dupri is the only two that I hear that nobody talks bad about when it comes to them. You don't hear nobody talking bad about them. Even though, like Candy said, your, your contracts suck. They do. Because it's going to go towards the label. They, whatever. But they never talk bad about Michael Bivens or Jermaine Dupree and Michael Bivens. And that's why they still cool with him. Anytime he can do an interview or anything like that, he's there. You know what I'm saying? And they still got a relationship. They don't talk bad about each other, nothing. Because he could have left their asses broke. Could have. You know yep. Easily. Easily. Mm -hmm. Easily. He could have been like, oh, here's a million dollars. Y'all split that shit and I'm going to take the 12 and go about my business. But he didn't. Especially you know what I mean? with how many groups we seen get get destroyed, man. Like financially, man. Like it's like a common thing. That's why I said, so you don't have to do it, huh? Because mm -hmm. you have so many times, so many groups that we that we were listening to back in the day, they was flat broke. Yeah, I yeah. remember <laughs> listening to TLC and not knowing they was. They got yeah. rad fours for all that money for that album. They got four rad fours and a couple thousand dollars, and that was it. That's Ooh, that's a topic for another day. I swear, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. I mean, that's re but think of how many people's story is similar to that, or you know, right, right. Think of all the rappers that they just they throw them a car, a couple bands, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, in a, so, in a rented house that they you're so, de own. you're so desperate to get out of your situation of, of maybe you know your financial situation or where you came from and all that. And they just they kids and they signing it away, and then yeah, you get older and you're like, damn, and you don't know the business, you don't know it, so you just like, all right, because you might get a lawyer that might be in the industry, so they're gonna screw you over. And then they start getting lawyers, get their cousins to work for them. And it's just a whole 
mess. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, that's so why I definitely tilt my hat to uh, Michael Bimmons for doing that to those guys because he could have made a lot of more money with them dudes, but he didn't after the first time he got out. So it's like, I'm out, and the second album did better than the first. So, right, right. He could have really, he could have, he could have really ate more than he and already did. Yeah. So yeah. where where did the where did the the group dynamic go by like you don't see it a lot no more? Like what happened? What with groups? Yeah, like R and B groups. <laughs> Labels only want solo acts now. It's cheaper. And then you gotta think also in the nineties, that's why I'm so glad when it came to boys, the men too, they were the only group to me in the nineties that people tried to break them. Mm -hmm. Why they use the, put the focus on Wanye. They always try to put the focus on him. He's the focus. He's the focus. And they was like, no, we not. Okay, he can go and do that song with Brandy. He can go do all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, we are boys to men. And that's it. We going to break up because of our shit, not because what the industry is going to try to do. And right. a lot of groups got affected by that because labels try to push groups. but they try to push the lead singer as the focus of the group. Which, which makes up causing rifts within the group. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. And and all that shit. And after a while, labels started realizing that that's why after like, honestly, after like day 26, you have not seen a male group in the public eye since. It's hard. It's hard for groups because nobody wants to deal with it mm -hmm. and, and that's why clowner in my opinion i feel like that's why rb continues to suffer mainstream wise because we had the backing of our groups that even though our you know our solo artists they was up there like our michaels and whitney's and them and janet and all them but we still have boys the men in vogue tlc all like swv all these acts was able to be like oh we got the big R&B sellers up here, but we still got our groups out here. So we was in there in the 90s. That's why everybody loves it. Because then after that, it was kind of like, it was all, let's focus on the solo acts. And you know, by then, that messes up everything. But guess, but guess, but guess, guess who did have groups? Whites. Say it. Yeah. The, yep. pop, the pop acts using our sound. So using we can blow up. Wow. So, so the True Ooh. Hills... And and everybody and and all them, they couldn't blow up the way they was supposed to. Come they on, they got big, but they hit a ceiling because yeah. they wanted. Because we had the boy band, but they they went and did it, sanitized our sound, mm. made it lesser. Yeah, yeah. But, but when you listen to Backstreet Boys and Instinct and all that. All that song is R and B. It's just very watered down R and B, but it's R and B to the fucking yeah. fullest. Yes. And, and that's what make me so mad because it was like by 96, you got 112 and Drew Hill that could have been up there for real. But who comes out? The Backstreet Boys and NSYNC start selling like boys the men was and our groups couldn't no more. It was just like, oh, they took they out. They can't front that they won't copy it because they say that they own mouth. That yeah. they were immu out of their mouth in interviews. It to this day, they yep. I've just seen a documentary recently and they were like, oh, no. no, we yep. were cop we were emulating what they did because we wanted to sell. Now, of course, they ain't say, and we knew we would really sell because we was white, but I can read between the lines, like, yeah, yep. but a white boy doing it, it's so exotic, yep. you know. Now was there a black person behind those groups? No. 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 Production on some of the production. Okay. Full okay. force. Okay. Full force. Oh, that's right. Full force did a like lot. Like the production, but not behind the, not the other stuff. Like I said, it was R&B stripped down. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's why that's I love what crazy. they said, the boys, the men impact. That's what they said on the documentary. The boys, the men impact from 1990 to 97. They By said- the way, Fuck that documentary because I don't know how they had a whole episode about that shit and not once did they mention about race. 
I was like, this is this fucking documentary is for gazy to me. No, yeah, they did. Fuck that. They didn't. They didn't. Like, say come it. on. They got them to interview. Like, you got the Nick Lachey because he said, "Yo, we were on Motown, so they told us you gotta, y'all gonna be like them. Y'all gonna be like boys and men, basically." So, so he was like, "That's why." And then by this time, hip hop is really mainstream by now. So you started seeing them dressing in the jerseys and the jeans and the this and the that. Like it was so. Did you know what they was dressed like? They they had watered down R&B and they was dressed like watered down Jodeces. Yep. Look at them fits. Yep. The only ones that really was following behind boys the men as far as the image wise was the Backstreet Boys because they were dressed in suits. They wouldn't dress in, but then the NSYNC were kind of looking more like Drew Hill and One Twelve in them. So it was like every and they like robot. them. Man. It was a robot for us, and that's oh. why it. So we this is like, face. cause like I, I just hear stories of like way back in the day, like you'll have a black artist, and then you look at the album cover, and there's white people on the cover because they don't want to show. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, like, like this. It seems like this stuff is like nothing new under the sun, really. Like it's, you know, what I'm saying like when, what? when New Kids on the Block came out, they were. Who were they emulating? New Edition? New See, that's what I'm saying. It's like, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Just, yeah. And the, they, the fame that uh, New Kids on the Block had is what is is how much bigger New Edition should have been. Yeah, part. they were big, but they, they did numbers wise. They want all New Kids on the Block. Right. Like, New Edition was going New Edition was going double platinum with you know, heartbreak, which is a blockbuster for us, but then you got new kids on the block that's selling ten million. And you know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it just shows the difference, and that's why it was. That's why I kind of get a little upset when it comes to people kind of like sunning boys the bin, to be honest, because I'm like, to be honest, they helped create the lane for the white ones that came after them. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's kind of mm -hmm. like the Whitney complex, to be honest. Because Whitney got so disrespected for crossing over and this and this and that. And then people started to emulate her. Then the record labels wanted more of her. You know what I mean? And then when it came to Boys and Men, it was like, okay, you you go in on them and they selling 15 and 16 million, which we love it. And then after a while, you saw where the drop happened for Boys and Men. They did 20 million with two and only did four for a freaking evolution as much of an artist as they were they will be selling out arenas they can't even do clubs that's crazy that's Let me tell you, me. When, when evolution was out or maybe right after that i was at uh nc state women's basketball game and boys the men came out and they did saying at halftime so they went from arenas that's to sing in at halftime at a women's basketball game. That's crazy. Because you could tell. That don't make no sense. It happens, though, because remember, I always say this. You know when our artist really gets into that pop lane and they're done with, and the label try to kind of get them to not do black shows. Because boys, the men, y'all saw they did the Apollo. But they did the Apollo one time. That's it. At the end of the road, no more. We never saw them on Apollo ever again. Just like Whitney had to do Greatest Love of All video to do an Apollo. Like, that's how crazy it is. Like, once they go, y'all saw Jodeci. Jodeci had a freaking show at the Apollo that they freaking recorded, and they brought out Wu-Tang and all this. Oh, right, right. You see what I'm saying? But Boys the Men, nope. They had... They first album they did but, Motown Philly after Apollo, but, that was it. But yeah, boys and men, Whitney and them, what were they on? Majors. So I'm sure that I'm sure they wanted. I'm sure boys and men wanted to do black shows. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I, I, I'm. I'm gonna stand and say 
I'm a hundred percent sure they they wanted to do a lot of stuff and they weren't able to do it because they have the white folk over there. Yeah, Michael Bill discovered them and everything, but they still on a major. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, even even though it's Motown, but by then Motown was not the Motown oh, of yeah. old. Uh-uh. You know, it, it was on some other shit. And where, who were they acquired? And it was under, it wasn't Motown and somebody else? No, they was not the yet. Oh, okay, not yet. It was okay. the label. So, because oh. if you think it was Big 10 and then Motown. Okay, then, okay. And then once they really blew, it was like, they went right to the label and that was okay. it. Okay. So like you said, they probably did want to do like they was like on, I think on Quest Love Supreme. Uh Nate and them was like, yo, we was getting envious of Joe C. Like we wanted to do Soul Train. We wanted to do you know the Apollo, but with a label behind us that's pushing us, we was doing world music awards where Michael Jackson is sitting front row. Like that's right. What- Right, you know, right, right. Over to Japan, freaking with 50,000 people at a stadium, and that's them. You know, Jody C could never do no shit like that. But it comes with its cons because now you ain't in front of your own people. Yeah, and, when, it, when, you, and when you got to come back, they looking at you like... Right. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So they couldn't even do Please Don't Go in those audiences. If they did, they might have just did a freaking a snippet of it, and then that was it. Because they wanted to hear them damn big crossover records. That's what they yeah. wanted. They didn't want to hear this, this record that we revered. Like, we would have loved for them to do that shit at the Apollo. We probably would have been like, yo, go on. Going crazy. You know crazy. Like, we would have lost heard, it. When I heard End of the Road, I said, I knew things would never be the same. Oh, like, yeah. oh, when yeah. that, when you have a song like that, I, I was like, uh, this it's never gonna be the same. Mm-hmm. They were, you know what I mean? The how successful I remember when that song first came out, how the frenzy over that song, and I heard it on the radio so much, like I knew they was like, Oh, we chasing that. Y'all keep giving us that. That's what y'all gonna give us. You know what I'm saying? And it was never the same really after that. I don't even think. Well, you know, in the documentary, they said they didn't even want to really do the song. Michael Bivens had to force them to do the record. He was like, Yo, "For real?" Mm-hmm. He was like, "This is a smash, y'all bugging right now." Because again, they are what we want them to give. They want us to give. They want that real R and B that stick. Like they want that. They want the please don't go. They want you know what I'm saying. They want those records. Michael Bivens said, "Y'all are nuts. This is a hit record, like huge." And they like, man, really? And when they did it, they realized how much of a hit record it was. You know, even though it is an R and B record, but it's more commercially accepted. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, that's all. No. I didn't know they didn't want to do it. That's crazy. No, they didn't. Nope. That's Michael, crazy. Like, y'all niggas is gonna do this record. <laughs> y'all niggas gonna do this record. I don't even dare. What y'all talking about? Y'all are going to do this record. Saw them dollar signs. It was like, yeah. Yeah. and you, and you know, Kill got the uh, what is it? The Pro Tools of it. You can tell Kanye is taking his anger out on this bitch because you can tell, like, he's singing for blood on this joint. Like, <laughs> he going in. You know what I'm saying? Because he probably like, they probably like, we gotta do this song like for real. Like, let's get this song and we can get out. Because you can just see the kind of levels he he went from high down, high down. It's like... Nah, he was going crazy on that joint. The ad-libs on that, they was going... Yeah, he was going nuts on that joint. When, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When the, beat, when the beat drops out and they start... Yeah. They was you going, see what I'm saying? They were going you know crazy. What? Me and John get in a road a lot of fever, but it's not a bad song. It just... It's, it just was just... Yeah, the song ain't yeah. bad, but I, no, I don't, I don't ever want to hear it again if I can help it. Right, right. You heard it. And you heard, heard it, boys you heard it a million so. times when it came out. That shit was pushed in your face so much when that shit came out. Like I, I heard that shit every hour. If you was listening, you know how we listen. 
You know? Movies. They put it in a lot of movies, on TV shows. Folks were singing it on talent show. Like, it was just much. Mm-hmm. You go to the gas station, it's being played. Like, I'm over it. Like, I was completely over it. Yes! I'm, like, over it. I'm, like, come on, yo. Like, but that's why I think, again, why Please Don't Go didn't get the love that it was supposed to. Mm-hmm. Because the label knew End of the Road was coming. Yeah. And it was like, all right, this song is all right. By now, everybody should have the album by now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, they right. like everybody should have it. Like y'all said, it's the first song on the album. Hello, you should have it. You should know it. Cool. We got this big record that's about to come. We about to shove it down your damn throat. So mm-hmm. y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like we about to really shove it down your throat. So be prepared for this. You know what I mean? Because labels know what's coming. That's why I be a little weary when they are artists that they last song or last single, and you will see, oh, the label not pushing this. What the fuck is coming now? Like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. what are they doing? And I always think about end of the road with this. And please don't go. That's why I have an issue. I give, like sis said, I give please uh end of the road fever because I love please don't go so much. And I wanted it to get that uff that they gave into the road. And I'm like, y'all, we could have got a video, y'all. Like, we could have got so many live performances from this, but we didn't because on our city hall, when they were doing please don't go, and they, you know, our city will sit you down because he was like, ain't nobody lip singing on this damn show. Negative. Right, right, right. And he was like, it ain't happening. And they sung aha, and they did that. And then the credits are coming up, and they doing please don't go. You see what I'm saying? So you kind of knew what, what, what was happening here. It was like, up, uh, 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 is the single. But please don't go. Y'all can do it, but we ain't gonna give it it. They even gave sipping or if the white man can't jump soundtrack more quick, please don't go. Yeah. Yeah. That's an <laughs> like, like you kinda it was kinda like the writings on the wall. You kinda knew like, all right, this ain't gonna get the love. So accept it on the album and just keep it moving. Cause y'all said y'all ain't never hear it on the radio. I actually did. Okay. Like I did. I, 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 I can't I can't remember ever hearing it on the radio. Like I Yeah, I never heard tape, it on the radio. It was all tape action for me. Like yeah. I used to be happy when I did. So it wasn't very often. You right. know what I'm saying? Like it right. wasn't very often, but when I did, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then that shit just went cut. Done. Mm. Out of we go. Whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we we went a little off track, but I think it was important things to be said. Yeah. yeah that was a, yeah, that was informative mm-hmm. for me. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully. Oh, I told Rail. I said, Rail, <laughs> you talk about a song that I love. Oh yeah. We ain't staying on topic on <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I already know the next time I come on here, it's really gonna be crazy. I'm just gonna see, say see, he be, he be on that shit, yeah. He do, he don't get it. Like, <laughs> y'all be with the freaking ask of you. I couldn't even speak for the first two minutes. <laughs> man, man, and that, you was yeah. like, they are all this. Uh, say something. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's one of the ones. That was like, he told was, me. He told me he ain't gonna have no rap. He was like, "Oh, you, you really, you really went out on a limb on this one." Thanks. Rel always picking it. That's why I hit him. I was like, "No, you didn't." <laughs> I was like, "Again, you did it again." I was like, "All right, but I ain't gonna be as bad as asking you." But God damn it! <laughs> yeah, I got, I got another good one. Got another good oh, one. God. So yes. I'll be back. Yeah. Well, we thank you once again, and. Um, how can people find you if you'd like to be found out in these internet streets? Uptown Rail 215 on Instagram, JBen215 on Twitter. Yeah. Come holla at me. Yes. And we Talk thank you. Nice, <laughs> you said what? Talk to him nice. <laughs> Yo, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. I knew it would make <laughs> you laugh. I had to. I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. I've had some moments, you know. 
<laughs> That's a moment. It's passion, it's passion, it's passion. That's all. That's all. Then we thank all our viewers as always for checking us out, hanging out with us. Um we, we family oriented, so just bring us some old cousins, subscribe, share, like, tell a friend, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, and we'll catch y'all on the next catch that. Yeah.